ending of all of these lines, it meant that these huge monstrosities mm -hmm. of machinery just were parked up all over the country. Yep. They were basically abandoned. There was yep. very little use for them yep. other than the fact that they may be a, a mark of what once was in Trinidad yep. and Tobago. Mm -hmm. We've heard that there's an engine that's been recently returned to the UK yep. to be refurbished at a cost of 350,000 mm -hmm. pounds. Why is it so important to have that engine refurbished and why is it so viable to okay. have that engine so running once again? That engine uh, is Picton. Okay? Picton. Yeah. Well, yes. it's, it, Picton is the name of the engine, right? The engine was, a, was built by Hunslet in 1927. It's what you call a 262 wheel arrangement, which means it's got, it's got three driving wheels and it's got, uh, well, six driving wheels and two guiding wheels at either end. Now, Picton was one of three unique engines that were built by Hunslet for using St. Madeline, right? You had number 18, Picton, mm -hmm. number 19, Taruba, number 20, Cedar Hill. Those were the three engines, okay? Now, these engines, uh, one came in 1927, that was Picton. Mm -hmm. um, the second one, uh, Taruba, number 19, came in 1934, and Cedar Hill came to Trinidad in 1936, okay? These were impressive engines. They were just as big a, as any engine that ran on the TGR, just as powerful as those engines, right? Um, those engines, along with two other earlier engines, which was number, number 12, Pamela, uh, uh, sorry, number 15, Pamela, and number mm -hmm. 12, Haig, right? These engines in 1956 were set aside as a strategic reserve, okay, about a mile east of using St. Madeline. Okay, just in case the new diesels that came in failed. So they were parked up. They were parked up there and they were forgotten for about. They were forgotten about, okay, in 1956. And these engines sat in that field, in fact, what turned out to be longer than they were in service. Okay, I first came across those engines quite by chance in 1979. Mm -hmm. I was on my way back from uh, a, where I worked in the oil industry down in, in uh, Balata East, which is close to Mayaro. And we were on our way back and there was an accident on the road and the, the, the van driver, the crew driver, diverted through the cane fields because he was a Princess Town man and he knew his way through the cane fields. Shortcut once and again. And this was about midnight because we were finishing off the 11 o'clock shift. And we came across, the, the lights came across these five steam locomotives. They had just burnt all the cane. So these locomotives were sitting there and I couldn't believe my eyes. And I asked him, I said, how long has those been there? He said, as far as back as he can remember because he was from Princess Town. The following day, I went back, and those engines were sitting there, and I photographed them. I went down there, spent time looking at them. I mean, those, those to me were iconic engines. You know, they, uh, by that stage, I had already been taking pictures of the diesels that were in there, but didn't know of the existence of these engines. Because they were essentially covered over by Well, they were covered forestry, over by, by bush and, and trees. Trees were grown, you know, trees had grown around through them and so forth. Anyway, I, um, eventually, I uh, found out the last second to last time I was in Trinidad, I, I found out by looking through the internet, I saw this article about a Leeds survivor returned to the UK. Now, um, these engines were built at Leeds. They were Hunslet engines, right? Okay. And um, there's, because they're three unique engines, there's a great deal of interest, right, when an article appeared about these engines. And a gentleman by the name of David Moncton from the Middleton Railway up in Leeds, right? With Middleton Railway is a, is a, a living museum, okay? What they've done is they, they take engines in and they mm -hmm. restore them, bring them back to work in order, and then they, they run them up and down for tourists to ride. And uh, this is what they do, okay? So what David Moncton did was to come to Trinidad. I know he doesn't like flying, so he, he really loved the engine and was really interested in getting to that engine back to, to come it. all the way to get it, right? But he came back to Trinidad. He made contact with officials at Carony, and they decided to sell him the engine. I think the engine was sold for one TT dollar or something. Yes, that's what it, I Of course, it was a Russian Hulk. They picked it up. They put it on the back of a low boy. They took it to the docks. They put it aboard a ship. They took it back to the UK, went through Her Majesty's Customs, and it arrived in Leeds. Now, uh, I wanted to meet David Moncton, because from the time I heard that, I, he had what I consider to be one of my engines, right? <laughs> <laughs> so I, I wanted to meet David Moncton. It just so happened that I was in Birmingham in an exhibition, a train exhibition in Birmingham, and I came across two Hunzel engines that were beautifully restored. This was, these are narrow gauge engines. What is narrow gauge? Well, mean? narrow gauge is, a, is you have four foot eight and a half, which is standard gauge, and then you have narrow gauge could be anything below that, okay. three foot, two foot six, whatever. Okay. Anyway, there was a there was a gentleman there by the name of um, Henry Noon. Uh, he came up to me and he he said, "Do you like these engines?" And we got chatting, and he said to me, "Where are you from?" 
I said, well, I'm from Trinidad. He thought I was Welsh. <laughs> I don't know what, they all think I'm Welsh. And I said, um, he said, well, a friend of mine just brought an engine back from Trinidad. I said, was he David Moncton? He said he would love to meet you. So we spoke, we exchanged email, and, and um, I got in touch with David. He invited me to Leeds. I went up to Leeds, and um, I have photographs of Picton. It's been dismantled. They're going to try and restore it, but it's going to take, it's in bad condition. Mm -hmm. It sat in the cane field for 50 odd years, right? I mean, if you think about it, it sat there from 1957 until 2002 when he took the engine back to the UK. And it's in pieces at the moment, but it, it's going to take at least 350,000 pounds to restore that engine back to them. That's where you got the figure from, right? That's, yes. that's what it's going to cost to get that engine going again. Now, I think the first thing they're going to do is restore it to cosmetically. What that means is you have the Harris Promenade engine. That's been, that's been restored cosmetically. Which You've, is a beautiful piece of machine. It is, it is. It is. And then you've got the other engine, the other Hunslet on the, on the docks at South Quay. You know, there's one there, right? An 060. But not on display. It is on display. It it's, on display. It's, it's right next to the Hummingbird, you know, the yacht. It's sitting there at the museum. Mm -hmm. I haven't been there this trip, but I usually go and take a photograph of it. And I'll be going there this time. And um, those are, that's what you call a cosmetic restoration. You, you get it back to look good, paint it, and you, you store it on display, right? So he's going to try and do that. His aim is to eventually get that engine running. Because actually, if you look at steam engines at the, at the uh, Middleton Railway, what they try to do there is they try to renovate industrial uh, examples of engines, mm -hmm. okay? Hans, uh, Picton is one of the biggest industrial engines, and it's actually quite a unique piece of history because it's one of three. And um, that's, you know, that's the story of Picton. And right now it's, it's being uh, dismantled, and hopefully one day we'll see it running again. I mean, they've, you'd be surprised what they brought back to life of those engines, you know, got quite a lot of them up there. How many more pieces of machinery do you know of that exists like this in Trinidad and Tobago that you think we should actually take interest in enough to have them, even if it's at a cosmetic level, restored so that we can understand our own transportation history, yeah. given that we're actually going back to that mode of transport once again to ease the congestion going on right now? I think that. You know, there's, there's, on the one hand, there's a social impact of railways, you know, bringing railways back, getting rid of all the traffic and so forth. That, I think that's, that's good. What they're doing is fantastic. On the other hand, there's history. Mm -hmm. You know, Trinidad and Tobago, Trinidad sugar industry, and actually Trinidad in general has such a rich history of in, industrial heritage. <clears throat> you know, if you look back at, um, at the, the locomotives that ran here, Back in the 18, you know, you see so, them running through Port well, of Spain. Well, okay, you're talking about the, the TGR, but I'm talking about in general all the locomotives. You know, I okay. hadn't realized when I started looking at this. I, I knew of a few engines in the TGR. I knew of a few engines at Carony, but when I started doing the research and speaking to people, I'm in touch with quite a lot of people now in the UK. I've come to learn of the rich history that existed here, the the engines that went through here, the amount of um, the technology for its time. Mm -hmm. Some of the first diesel engines were run in Trinidad long before they even ran in Britain. So, for instance, Carony was bringing in Vulcan engines before the war. Now, the war slowed down that transition from steam to diesel. But certainly in 1946 and sometimes prior to that, there were diesel engine technology beginning here where other places didn't have diesel technology. So Trinidad, you know, as, a, as far as a rail hub was concerned, was quite a mecca for, 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 for technology and for, and for progress at the time, right? And, and that's something that we forget about, you know, some things that we don't, not a lot of people know about, not mm -hmm. a lot of people talk about. So that's what I'm trying to document. So we have that for generations to come so people realize what, is, what exactly took place here. And no matter how long it takes, and no matter for goodness sakes, you'll be gone, you'll be gone. You're begun. You're begun.